What's up? I just filmed this feather identification speed run where as quickly as possible, I tried to, to determine what bird this feather came from using just the bird. We were able to get it, which is pretty sick, um, but it went by so quickly. It took like like 57 seconds, I think. Um, so I thought it'd be kind of cool to, to go through and slow down a little and break down different sections to give some visual references to help you guys understand what I'm talking about and to kind of help me explain a little bit more in depth exactly why I'm eliminating certain birds and making making the decisions that I'm making. So let's let's give it a try. Let's let's pop up here to this corner. Let's play this bad boy and uh, let's get into it. Feather identification speed run, ready, set, go. Pick up the tag, species name is covered up. Take a close look, it's evenly spaced on either side of that central vein. And there's fluff on the bottom, which means that this is a body feather. Body feather, step one of determining what bird a feather is from is is actually trying to figure out what type of feather you're looking at. The, here Here's an image of all the different types of shapes of feathers that could be on one specific bird. This, I'm pretty sure, is a contour feather or a body feather. They kind of match up with this one right here. It's because um, it's kind of a little fluffy on the bottom. And the main thing to look at is the, the spacing on either side of that central vein or central rachis. If it's even, like it is on our side, the right side is even with the left side, it's either a, f uh, a tail feather or a body feather. If it's uneven, like there's a little bit more feather on one side of the vein than another, then you probably have a wing feather, like almost definitely. <clears throat> the reason this is important is because we have some really distinctive pink at, at the tip. Understanding what part of the bird the feather came from will help us kind of wrap our heads around what part of the bird is that specific color. So this bird doesn't only have pink colors on it, it specifically has a pink body, which is extremely helpful. Let's continue on. Its sheer size eliminates all passerine birds like a pink robin. It's also Okay, its sheer size eliminates all passerine birds, which are perching birds or songbirds, those tiny birds that you see kind of outside a lot. It's because, um, we know that because this, this is a body feather and it's huge, it's like three or four inches long. And some of those birds are only like four inches long entirely. It's just way too big. Body feathers of passerine birds are like the size of your thumbnail or something like that. So we can eliminate a huge group right there. Oh, and we also mentioned pink robins. <clears throat> now we're going through just like eliminating birds with pink bodies. <coughs> Excuse me. This is a pink robin right here. It has a pink body, which is what we're looking for, but it's too small. It's a passerine bird, so we can eliminate it. It's it's just not possible. It's not a pink robin. Too big to be a carmine bee eater. This is a carmine bee eater. It's not a passerine bird, but the carmine bee eater is also very small. So despite having a pink body, we can also uh, eliminate it from possibility. We're looking for a large bird with a pink body. Large bird with pink body. Those are the, the key characteristics. A pink body, like like central core. Not pink wings, not pink tail, not a pink head, a pink body specifically. And it's gotta be pretty big. We can eliminate rosate spoonbills because they typically have a white body. Rosate spoonbills are the birds that I always think of when I think of pink birds because they're so cool. They're some of my favorite birds. I think they're awesome. Um, if you look at them, there's some pink on them, but their bodies which we're focusing on are a little bit more white, not quite pink enough, because the, the tip of this feather is, is super pink. So we can eliminate rosate spoonbills. And this pink right here is a little too pink. It's not red enough to be a scarlet ibis. Scarlet ibises are sick. This is what scarlet ibises look like. Crazy. All of them look like this. It's, they're nuts. Um, and the, their, their color is a little, not quite reddish pink. It's like an orangish, reddish pink almost like highlighter orange with the saturation absolutely cranked up and that's definitely not the color that we're looking at right here so we're kind of creating a list of large pink birds and just going one by one and checking them off and making sure that making sure that this can't be from any of them possibly a parrot but if you look parrot <clears throat> rose breast and macaw is the the bird that came to my mind next which is really great because it's very easy to check if a feather came from a parrot or not. I'm gonna go through the characteristics right here. Really close, there's no after feather at the bottom. And these hooklets right here aren't really strong enough for it to be a parrot like a rose-breasted macaw. There's no after feather at the bottom and the hooklets aren't strong enough to be a parrot. Two distinct traits of parrot body feathers. It has an after feather at the bottom, which is like an extra, an extra little feather at the bottom of that central vein that just pokes out. Really distinct and really strange. Parrots have a lot, uh, a lot of parrots have them. Also, the hooklets on parrot contour or body feathers are very strong. You usually don't see the feathers split 
kind of like ours is right here. So because it didn't have those two traits, we can eliminate parrots like the rose-breasted macaw. Let's keep going. All that's left are flamingos. All that's left are flamingos. I'm sure a lot of you thought we were heading in this direction. So we're at flamingos, but my friends, what kind of flamingo do we have? This is where things get a little bit tricky. There are six types of flamingos this could be. It could be a greater American Andean, James, Chilean, or lesser. Okay, here are the six types of flamingos. What do you think this could possibly be? What's your guess? Hmm. To give you a little bit of a tip, here on out is mostly color comparisons. So we're kind of comparing the different colors. Okay, remember your guess. Let's see if you're right. This pink color is relatively deep and that eliminates all pink flamingos. I think I misspoke here. I meant to say it eliminates all pale flamingos. Because the tip is so pink, we can eliminate all pale flamingos that specifically have pale bodies, which surprisingly is a lot of them. It means it's not an Andean, James, greater, or lesser. Andean, James, greater, or lesser. We can eliminate all of those. So now we only have two possible flamingos. This could be it's American and Chilean. American and Chilean. Okay, another opportunity for a guess. What do you think? Okay. Let's see. Americans are super pink, but there's a little bit of white here at the bottom, so we can eliminate that one. Americans are super pink, but there's a little bit of white at the bottom here, so we can eliminate Americans. My thought was, because there's some white here, white might show up on the body of the flamingo, and this was kind of a little bit of a sketchy guess, I'm not going to lie, but if I had to guess between the two... If, if I had to guess between those two flamingos, one is much more pink than the other, and because we had some white, I was gonna choose the one that was less pink. So that's why I went with the Chilean. Did you guess the same? Let's see if it's right. Which means that this is a Chilean flamingo, Latin name, Phoenicopteris chilensis. Let's freaking go! Let's freaking go! Oh. Did you get it right? Let me know. Also, did you like this speedrun breakdown? Let me know that too. Thanks, bye guys.